Hey guys, welcome back to another enshrouded video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys the best build for a mage healer within the game. This guy has a pretty tremendous damage output. It has good health regeneration and unlimited mana. You'll be able to fire off every one of your eternal spells without worrying about depleting your mana because your mana will regenerate instantaneously. Before we get into the video, I just want to say thank you, Keen, for granting me the opportunity to play this game. It's a very good game. I've been playing it for over 80 hours and I love every minute of it. I cannot wait for you guys to update the game, add, I don't know, DLCs or add updates, new monsters, whatever it is. I'm pretty excited and I can't wait. I also want to say thank you, Keymailer, for granting me the opportunity to request the key. You guys are awesome. And again, I am pretty grateful that I was able to get this game key. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So starting off, we're going to be talking about the armor. The armor that I'm using within this build is the Elder Armor. It's by far the best armor if you're using a magic based build. It has good magic resistance, which is 281 and magic and physical resistance of 140. Each piece of the armor amplifies your magic output, which is very good. So let's just do a quick overview of what each of the armor does. So for the hat or the headpiece, it gives you plus 15 magical critical hit chance and a plus 12 critical strike damage. For the chest, plus 120 health and plus 96 mana. For the gloves, plus 9 damage against magical foes and plus 12 magical damage multiplier. For the trousers, plus 36 mana and plus 2 mana regeneration. And finally, the boots, plus 4 mana regeneration and minus 120 mana regeneration delay. So the armor is pretty good and again, by far, it's the best armor if you're using a mage slash healer or slash anything that, does, that uses magic. Now let's move on to my equipments. I'm using for my long range attack power is the undergrowth staff. It's level 25 and a power of 47. It has three plus mana and a mana leech, which means whenever I attack a foe, it leeches mana from them back to me so I can use my spells over and over again. Also, it has spiritual, which increase the rate of my mana regeneration. For block, I'm using the Eternal Plane, level 25. It has 9 block and 87 parry power. For my backpack, I have the large backpack, which is a plus 24 slots. For the grappler, I have the improved grappler and ghost glider for my glider. Ghost glider is by far the best glider within the game. Even though it's only available in late game, I suggest that you guys go for it. It's really, really worth it and you should definitely try to get it. For my rings, I'm using two of the same ring, which is the Ring of Rhapsody. So what it does, it minuses 20 from my base mana, which lowers my mana bar, my spirit bar. However, it gives me 20 plus mana regeneration. So whenever I use a spell that requires mana, it instantly regenerates 20. And because I'm using two of the Rhapsody rings, instead of 20, I get 40 back. So that means I cannot run out of mana because these two rings plus the ability of my trousers and shoes, my mana regeneration is off the chart. For my wand, I'm using the Scorching Wand, which is a level 25 mid range weapon. It has 47 damage. I upgraded to its maximum. So it has mana regeneration. It has overcharge. It has 9 plus magic damage, 14 plus ice magic protection, and another plus 9 magic damage. Mana leech, which is pretty good because it gives me back mana, 2 mana leech. And yeah, that's it for that. And for the weapon, or the sword, melee weapon, I'm using the light forged axe. I want the gold one. Sadly, I only have the epic one. But it's a level 25 epic sword with 47 damage. It has a maximum durability of 300 and it has a plus uh, 18, 27 plus magic damage with Brute, which increased critical hit damage by 20%. Now, the reason why I use this Lightforge Axe is because of its fire damage. If you guys didn't know, pretty much everything that I use is based off of fire, which the Scorching Wand and also not my undergrowth staff. I wanted a fire staff, but I haven't gotten one yet. So I'm using this one because it's pretty good because it increases my maximum mana by one. Pretty much that's it for my equipment. Now we're going to move on to the skill points. So again, I've acquired all 114 skill points and I'm going to be showing you guys the best place to put them if you want to have a pretty broken build. 
but before we do that we need to find out what kind of stats we want to build to get the best out of our mage class and the stats that we need to build for that is spirit and also intelligence spirit is how much mana our character holds and intelligence is how much damage our character can deal if we go ahead and look at our character and then go to all attributes you can see right here our mana is 295 and this is based on our equipment and all the other stuff for the magic damage it's plus 25 because again for every point that we have it's five so right now we have five intelligence so that means we have plus 25 intelligence in total and for our spirit it's based on 20 so because we have five we have a hundred spirit so if you go back to the main game that blue bar under our green health is our spirit bar so to get started the best skills that you should get for progress through the game is the double jump it's very important in, and it's also useful in combat so getting it is not a bad idea so firstly we need to go into the survivor tree and get the endurance then get the runner and finally get the double jump so that's all we need from the survivor tree now we're going to move on to the healer tree firstly we're going to go into intelligence again intelligence increases your damage output by five percent per attribute point so if you go ahead and unlock it it was 25 first but now it's 6 so 6 times 5 is 30 so it's plus 30 percent damage output we're gonna go healer and then we're gonna get healer 2 so healer 1 it says heal gains from healing spell will be increased by 10 percent and healer 2 instead of 10 it's increased by an additional 20 percent so that's pretty good then we're gonna go and get the intelligence and finally, the best skill to have for a healer is Water Aurora. So what this does, it you emits a healing aurora. It help it heals all injured. <clears throat> so what it does, you emits a healing aurora. It heals all injured allies within 15 meters. The healing scales with your intelligence attribute. One health for every two points of intelligence. So right now we have seven. So if we activate healing aurora each player in 15 meter radius will get a total of about 3 health or 3.5 health per second good thing is that we can upgrade it to water of life so instead of getting one per health per two points you get two health per every point so for example you would get six plus the one would mean you get seven health per second and it keeps on going up because it scales with your intelligence point so the more intelligence you get the more HP you'll get back from the water aurora next we're gonna get the healing revive which revives a player revived players will heal 25% of their health instead of 10 then we're gonna go ahead and get another intelligence points so with that done we're gonna move on to wizard because wizard is a extension of uh, spells and magic and everything needed so we're gonna go ahead and get some stuff unlocked here so firstly we're gonna go ahead and get the spirit which is going to increase our maximum uh, mana capacity and then we're gonna go into this is the way when attacking with a magical weapon all magic all damage is increased by 10% because we use magical weapons which is our staff or wand and also magical swords this will always be in effect so we will always do an increased 10% damage we're then gonna go to quick charge quick charge is important for your staff because each staff you have to charge it up which takes a time to cast so if you can actually cut that down by 50% that will be tremendous so each of your spells will be able to fire off a lot faster so you can do more spells more quickly next we're gonna go into our spirits to increase our mana bar and then we're gonna go and select the typing that you want to use within enshroud you have three different typing you have fire thunder and ice i believe fire is more efficient and it has a longer and more effective tree so that's why i'm going to be going into that and radiant aurora is a broken passive skill that i really really like and another thing is that the monsters within the shroud are more susceptible to fire attacks so having a fire element is something that you should definitely invest in so we're going to go to the arsonist which is going to increase all fire damage all fire damage is increased by an additional 10 percent and then we're going to unlock the pyromaniac which increases by increases it by an additional 20 percent then the radiant aurora 
So Radiant Aurora, all fell foes within 10 meters take 1 damage per intelligence per second. So if we unlock that, every second our foes will take 8 damage. And then if we upgrade it to the Sun Aurora, it's going to take 16 damage per second. So the Arsonist and the Pyromaniac works very well with my weapons. If I go back to my bag, you can see that my axe does fire damage so i'm gonna get a 10 percent plus damage for every time i attack them because of my skill and because of this fire uh, en enchantment that is on my weapon with that done we're gonna go into intelligence to get some more intelligence points and then we're gonna go wizard now this is a very good skill and it works very well with another one i'm gonna be showing you guys that in a quick second so this one states when attacking with a magical weapon your critical chance your critical hit chance is increased by 10 percent now critical hits are pretty good because they do a lot more damage and the more chances you have to get to score critical hits is the more damage you can do to an, an enemy so we're going to unlock that and then we're going to unlock the dark arts all shroud damage is increased by an additional 10 percent we're going to also unlock abyss which is all shroud damage is increased by an additional 20 percent so with that done, we're finished with the wizard and now we're going to move on to trickster. So with trickster, we're going to start off with the counter strike and then we're going to go into intelligence and then be gone. Be gone is a very good uh, skill, a magic powered punch that pushes and stuns hit foes. So if you have a foe that is in front of you, you can pretty much push him away and stun him at the same time and then go into an attack which might finish him off or do significant damage. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, unlock that and then we're gonna get the intelligence points and then we're gonna get terror. Terror is very, very good. On a critical hit with a spell, the target will be stunned for four seconds. Now this is pretty good. So every time you land a critical hit, the target will be stunned. And again, the wizard skill increases our critical hit chance by 10%. So that is crazy. These two works very well. We're not going to get the arcane concentration and we're not going to get any of these spirits in this line. So that's it for the trickster. We're then going to move on to the battle mage. The reason why we're using the battle mage is because we do use one. Again, I have the scorching one. So we need to dish out a good amount of damage with the wand. So firstly, we're going to get blink. Firstly, we're going to get blink. Blink replaces the dodge roll ability with a short range teleport. It's pretty good and it's better than the rolling. We're then going to go ahead and activate or unlock Arcane Deflection. Then we're going to go down to Intelligence and we're going to get Unity. We're then going to get Sting. Repeated 1 damage is increased by 20%. And we're going to get the Spirit. And we're also going to get this Intelligence. So that's it for the Battle Mage. We're then going to move on to this line, which is close to Tank and Battle Mage right between. We're going to unlock the attack evasion. This is not necessary. The fact that we want this is just because we need to unlock it to go down. This is also not necessary. But we need the spirit. We also need this one, which is blood litin. When scoring a critical hit with a magical weapon, there is a 50% chance to spawn two health, mana, and or stamina orb. Gathering the orb replenishes 10% of the respective resources. So when we attack, if we land a critical hit, there's a 50% chance that we can spawn two magical orbs or two stamina orbs or two mana orbs, which, you know, replenishes us depending on what we get. And then the final, final one right here is the life burst. When killing an enemy with a magical weapon, all players within 15 meters of the target gain health equal to three times your intelligence. So right now my intelligence is at the, uh, 13. So if we multiply that by three, we're going to get a total of 39 HP every time I defeat a foe. So with that, we won't go any further. We're gonna go over into the tank. So we're gonna go ahead and unlock the shiny plates, physical armor, gains 10% more armor points which is good then we're gonna get heavy plate the maximum amount of physical damage your armor is able to mitigate is increased by 10% which is good we're also gonna get the constitution which is going to increase our health bar so it's going to be larger and then we're going to get tower so tower is a pretty good uh, ability when there is three or more enemies within 20 meters you suffer 10% less physical damage we're also going to unlock Warden, 
when there are three or more enemies within 20 meters you suffer 15 percent less magical damage we're then going to get another constitution to increase our health bar and finally we're going to get earth aurora so all battle damage all damage against players within 10 meters is reduced by 10 percent so with that done, we have finished the tank, we have finished the battle mage, finished the healer, finished the wizard, and we have finished the trickster. We're going to go up all the way up here to where we see the ranger. What we're going to unlock is the marksman and also the sharpshooter. The reason why we want to do this is because we want to increase our damage output for our ranged weapon, which is going to be our staff. So we're going to unlock dexterity, and then we're going to get the marksman. All damage dealt with a ranged weapon is increased by 10%. So that's going to increase our staff's damage output. And we're also going to get the sharpshooter. So instead of 10, an additional 20%. So we have two points left. What we're going to do with those two points is we're going to see if we can get some intelligence points. Or if we can get some... Yeah, we're looking for intelligence. Intelligence is what we want. So right now we won't be able to get any intelligence. So let's spend this skill wisely oh we can get an intelligence right here and spirit spirit we're gonna go ahead and get a constitution right here so with that we've finished all of our skill points and now we have a constitution of eight spirit of nine endurance of six strength five dexterity six and intelligence 14. so our character stats looks like that and if you go ahead and try to attack one of these level 30 dragons we're going to be using our fire blast we're going to see how much damage or how quick we can defeat this guy so let's go ahead and attack critical hit it stunned critical hit stunned we took it down in three hits which is pretty good 